Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to have a chat about who gives the best head in Warhammer 40k. And depending on how you look at that question, you could think to yourself, well, the Harrispex is a clear contender, as is the Mutilith Vortex Beast. But you would have to be an absolute filth bag, your mind would have to be in the gutter to approach this from anything other than an innocent, clean angle, which is the angle we're taking. Because this is all about, of course... Which kit gives the best head for kit bashes in Warhammer 40k, and in DJ Age of Sigmar, and other box games as well? Really, the title just made me laugh, so that's why it's called that. Anyway, so, let's start out with some, some favourites, the Grey Knights Terminator Squad. Now, essentially, what I'm going to do is just talk through a couple of kits that have not just, like, single applications. There are some that are very niche, that work very well for certain things, but don't really work in other situations, and a good example of this are the Grey Knights Terminator Squad and the Grey Knights Strike Squad. So, both of these kits have got heads on the sprues that are absolutely perfect for a certain look when it comes to Space Marines, be they Primaris or just normal, regular, standard Space Marines. Of course, if you are building a Black Templar's army, then the Grey Knights heads are your first port of call for making them look that little bit different, for giving them that more kind of... That more kind of knightly feel, so to speak. To be honest, my preference is always the Grey Knights Terminator Squad helmets. I find the like the the kind of straight angles on the bottom of the helmet to be a lot more. I don't know. They just look kind of cooler to me than the Paladin heads and the Strike Squad heads. But there are things to be said, especially for the Strike the Strike Squad heads, because you get I mean ten in a box for a start. Whereas of course with the with the Grey Knight Terminator box slash Paladin's box, you get five of one lot and five of the other so you don't you get a bit more variation but if you're going for a specific look across all then you kind of miss out a little bit i will say that actually the grey knights terminator squad heads work a lot better on primaris whereas always found that the strike squad heads look better on the regular not the regular space marines when it comes to doing things like black templar or black templar-esque armies Honestly, these guys are like your first port of call for when it comes to doing conversions. Not just for the heads, either. I mean, I know that's the, the main focus of the video, but there is such a wealth of, of close combat weaponry to be had off these guys. Admittedly, they're short on things like chainsaws, but if you want if you want power weapons, if you want thunder hammers, there's such a variety of different weapons that you can get from these guys. And there are a significant number of little trophies and things that work as well. Again, the Grey Knights Terminator Squad being a, a great example of this. The I can never remember what they call those small like decorative shields, but the little shields, the heads, and the weapons together, you're like halfway to putting together a really nicely themed Black Templar squad. And of course, with both of these kits, there is also quite a lot of stuff there to be used if you're making your own Inquisitor for a start. I mean, you can pretty much make an Inquisitor out of anything, but you can properly make one that fits really nicely into a Black Templar's force using essentially the same parts. It carries across really, really well. So when it comes to that kind of style of chapter, honestly, those two, those two kits, I feel like they're the go-to. You see them a lot, and for good reason. They work exceptionally well. There is also, when it comes to sort of fairly limited use, but still still good, the Blood Warriors. So we've talked about the Blood Warriors before in uh, when we talked about kind of Age of Sigmar and now Necromunda having better looking berserkers than Warhammer 40k does, which is a bit frustrating because, you know, 40k actually has corn berserkers and these aren't actually that. Um, of course, they will get around to updating them eventually. It would be nice to see it sooner rather than later, but frankly, that comment applies to pretty much every old kit that Games Workshop makes anyway. So, in the meantime... If you're going, if you're going for some sort of, you know, berserker kit bash, you can use the whole kit from these guys, but just the heads alone, for the most part, look quite a bit better than most of the ones that you can find for 40k. Obviously, the Chaos Space Marine kit now is 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 way better than it was, but if you wanted to theme the entire squad and you wanted to kind of spread the corn theme throughout, you really can't go wrong with the Blood Warriors heads. They, they, they work well for both settings with minimal or no adjustment whatsoever. It, they're, just, they're just really good pieces out of that kit. Now, of course, probably should mention, I know we're a few minutes into the video at this point, but when it comes to kit bashing and stuff, 
buying the full kit is obviously expensive. But if you're going for a particular look, sometimes the only way to get that thing that you want is to spend that bit extra. For me, just building the stuff as it comes in the box is like... It's fine if you want to do that, and if you're going to stick to that, and if you have a limited budget, it probably makes sense to to just do that and to, you know, expand out where possible, but not go crazy with it. Converting and kit bashing is like an entire hobby within the hobby in and of itself. So when I say things like Grey Knights, great for building Black Templars, it is of course way more expensive, but they are still good options at the same time. And it's, again, same thing with Blood Warriors. If you're doing something corn-themed, you really can't go wrong with... I mean, again, not just not just the heads. The heads are the main focus, but there's some nice weapons in there. There's a very cool banner in there that I always think looks good. Um, it's a solid kit for that side of things. Now, going a little bit more kind of away from the whole Space Marine side of things, the Sisters of Slaughter have a, a properly unique sort of... Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is off of these off of these girls. They've got a particular look to the helmets that they wear that it is it is like obviously elven but because it is almost entirely metallic, it is a full face covering. It works for pretty much anything. Anything Eldar or Dark Eldar related. If you want to take that more sort of creepy angle, if you want to build something that just looks a bit more off than you would expect. I really, really like this kit for the heads alone. I mean, the rest of the kit is good as well. The poses are nice, the weapons look cool. Um, the actual, like, the whips that they have are worryingly reasonable. Let's be honest, they're, they're not insanely long. It doesn't look like they're going to trip over them. There aren't 18 tails off the end of it. It actually looks like a almost like a functional weapon, which is kind of nice. But there's something, there's just a very unique quality to the heads on this kit that if you're going for that kind of more creepy angle, just work really, really well. I've seen a few different kind of uh, like conversions, for Dark Eldar especially, using, using parts of this kit, and it always looks good, and the heads especially. I always think just stand out as being that little bit, that little bit of something different to what you normally see. Now, as a couple of uh, a couple of like notable mentions, the heads off the Asher Gang, I think, are one of the best parts of of this kit. The only thing is, they are so particular to to like the style that they are is very specific. It's like super ultra specific. And they do not work on anything. Like, you can't just throw them on whatever model and it will probably turn out okay. They have a very unique and distinct style, which I think makes them a bit of a challenge to use, especially in the context of 40k, when you have a, you know, a a limitation on to just how, you know, just how many armies have, like, an abundance of, of female figures, let's say. Which makes them a bit tricky to use, which is a shame because they are some of the more interesting like sculpts that that have been done. They are all they're all unique. They're all interesting. They all look very different to a lot of the other stuff that you that you find pretty much anywhere else in any of the ranges. If you can find the right application, I think they're some of the some of the best looking heads that you can get, but they are so super specific that I think it's a bit of a challenge, really, to to find where to put them, what to put them on. You you kind of have to be careful with what you do with them, otherwise they just look massively out of place, which I think is not necessarily a shame. If anything, it just shows how how completely coordinated and cohesive the the Escher Gang design is. That you have this this kind of really nice resource that is actually kind of a challenge to use in a lot of places. And a slightly uh, a slightly similar note, the Cypher Lords, I think of, I mean, it's some of the nicest models. Um, I, I really like the Cypher Lords uh, warband. But again, the heads look super interesting. Now, I always look at them and, and think Zinch and wonder what you could do with them. To be honest, if you're doing something in terms of, like, 40k cultists, I don't, I don't know that the... I don't know that the bodies necessarily would 100% fit, but 
the heads are just really well designed, really nicely designed. And again, the fact that they are... I don't think they're full helmets, but the fact that they are mostly enclosed around the front, you've got this big kind of decorative plume coming out of the back. You could, I think, reasonably, you can get away with putting them on things like Chaos Space Marines. You could get away with putting them on quite a few different models. Humanoid for the most part, obviously. Um, although I don't know whether you might be able to get away with sticking them on something Eldar-related. I was going to say maybe maybe some of the, like, the headdress elements would be too big, but then again... The actual models they're on are fairly slim, fairly lithe. Although there are aspects to them which take, not take away, but kind of balance out the size of the crest on the head. I don't know, they they are really, I think, some of the nicest, like, it's one of the nicest warbands that, that Games Workshop has done. But the heads especially are just something, again, very different, very unique. It's the same thing as the uh, Sisters of Slaughter. They just don't look like anything else. They have that instant visual impact, which works really, really well. Now, in terms of general, like general purpose, there there are a couple of standouts when it comes to uh, when it comes to various kits, and one of them is the Skitari Vanguard, and the other are the Empire Flagellants. Flagellants, flagellants. Yeah, I always get that the wrong way round. Every time I mess it up, every single time. So. It's kind of difficult to choose between the two. In terms of usefulness for 40k, I mean, the Skitari Vanguard have so much going for them. The helmets that come in this kit, are they just, they just work well on almost everything. You can stick those helmets on top of, of like, Stormcast Eternal armor, and it immediately makes it look like some sort of, some sort of Inquisitor. You can stick them on Primaris armor, and it looks like some sort of almost like Iron Handsy tech kind of thing going on. You can throw them on pretty much anything. You can throw them on House Cordor bodies from Necromunda and end up with like Dark Admech style stuff. I mean, that's what I did to make my my Dark Mechanicus um, kill team was Cordor bodies and Skitari Vanguard heads and weapons. They are super versatile. You can apply them to so many different things. Throw them on Sisters of Battle that you don't have helmets for, and they are close enough to match the others and can be used to denote like characters and such. They're super versatile. They're super easy to paint. They have a nice amount of detail that doesn't take a huge amount of messing with. And you can chuck them on so many different kits to make them look techy without really needing to do that much else. I think they're one of the... I mean, the Skitari Vanguard kit is one of my favourite kits at, like, overall. The the amount of gubbins and cool weaponry and stuff that you get off there and just the kind of number of options that you get with it make it one of those kits that I think is absolutely worth grabbing if you are planning to put together, like, a big kit-bashed army because you'll find... you will find multiple things in there no matter what you're doing, pretty much. But... The heads especially are super good, and they just apply so easily to so many different things. And I've even seen people sticking those heads like into Nighthaunt models, and making making like tech priests and stuff. And it doesn't look out of place. It fits. There's just something about the design of them that works almost no matter where you put them. Now the same can't be said, obviously, for the flagellants. Um, I've now gone back to getting it wrong again. I'm pretty sure. But this has a special this this like these guys have it like a special place in my heart just because of how absolutely insane so many of the heads are. If you want to make a a rabble, an absolute mad rabble for almost any army, I mean anything Imperium or Chaos based, obviously they, they fit right in. But you there's so many options. There's a dude with his head on fire. You've got guys with ropes that are around their mouths. You have people with full, like, face cages over the front of them. If you want, like, a bunch of screaming, beardy weirdos, you absolutely cannot go wrong with these. And you can, again, stick them on so many different kits, and even the ones that shouldn't make sense somehow look look at least crazy enough for you to get away with it. I think there's almost a value of... Oh, these got this looks so mental. It just it just works. It shouldn't. It shouldn't work. It's a dude with his head on fire. But for some reason, it's a dude with his head on fire, so it looks fine. It's again, it's one of those kits where if you're going for a certain look, especially for things like um 
especially for things like like Imperium armies of a certain kind, whether you want to do some sort of mad penal legion thing or whether you want to just have a, a group of absolute like frothing berserkers, there's so many different bits that work well, but the heads are like a standout point. They've aged super well. They look they look good. Um, I've actually you know messed about with this kit myself a few times, and th- there is no head in there that doesn't look at least a bit mad. And for certain applications, you just want a head that looks a bit mad. There's so many to choose from. They just, yeah, it's it's a really cool kit. And I think the, again, the heads in there are some of the, like, the most interesting and unique that you can get from, especially like Age of Sigmar. I think these guys are like the standout in terms of just, you can make anyone look like a lunatic with these guys, which is a genuine strength. So... There you go. That's just a little for me. For me, it's it's between it's it's the flagellants and the Skitari Vanguard that have the that have the the monopoly on on great heads. Well, not monopoly, but have the most applications that I found personally. But of course, all of the others that we've gone through, whether they're tricky to use, a little bit niche but still good, or like core to doing certain conversions, those are the best heads in Warhammer Forty K, and those are the kits that give the best heads in Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigma and Necromunda and Warcry. But we'll ignore that bit because it wouldn't all fit in the title. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to let me know in the comments which kit you prefer for your kit bashing needs. Is there one that you go back to time and time again that has got a certain part that you like every time? Are there any, like, in terms of actual just for the heads alone you would buy this kit that you use constantly or have picked up before let me know in the comments down below feel free to click all the things patreon video subscribe all that stuff click it if you like don't click it if you don't want to and of course there is an affiliate link for element games in the description what you can click and if you buy something it supports the channel because i get something for sending you that way and at the end of the month 10 percent of it goes to charity and it's cheaper than buying it from games workshop so it's a nice thing to do if you want to do it but you don't have to it's entirely up to you Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.